I'm going to start this video off by saying that I don't usually take suggestions for my videos. I do this for one very good reason, I don't want to let anyone down. I can only really make a video on something if I find it interesting enough to talk about and it's also lengthy enough for me to make a decent length video on. And I don't want to disappoint someone by having them show me something they're passionate about but I might not be quite as much. I respect you as my audience far too much for that. That being said, when Kane Kenshin on Twitter sent me a link to a video they thought worth covering, I agreed that it was indeed worth a look. I mean, it's just the one, but it's over 9 minutes long and packed with details to spot and try to piece together a story from. It's pretty much exactly what I enjoy looking for. However, as it's only one video, I'm not sure if this one's going to become a series for the creator, nor am I entirely sure of whether the series has an overarching title. For now, I'm just going to be referring to it as the Little Red series, after the central animatronic mascot. If another title merges after that, I'll change the title of this video to fit that. So, if that's happened and the title's different now, now you know why. I'll also link it in the video description down there so you can watch it too. It's been age restricted, so just a heads up for that. It's also been criminally underwatched because of this, so please do give it a look and leave some supportive words for me. So, with all of that cleared up, let's get into talking about the first of the Little Red series, Little Red's Transfer. Before we start the video, we need to look at the description of the video to get an idea of what the backstory is behind this video. Reading it, the uploader tells us that he found this unfinished transfer of an employee training tape on a disc hidden in his father's CD cabinet. The uploader doesn't quite know how to explain what they've found, and are uploading it in the hopes that someone out there can help them decipher what is going on. The first thing we see on screen is a copyright warning, garbled and pretty much unreadable unless you pause the video. It says that the cassette is for private use and isn't supposed to be copied, showed publicly, all the standard things you expect from a copyright warning. At the bottom you can just about make out that the tape is only supposed to be given to new employees upon starting the job. Immediately this tells us that the transfer mentioned in the title and the description was that of a video cassette to the CD that our uploader found it on, one that belonged to a company. We then see the words, Illusion Plus Entertainment proudly presents, which gives us the name of the company these new employees will be working for. The title card of the video then appears, showing us that this is an employee training tape for Little Red and is dated 1988. A somewhat realistic cartoon of a mascot head then travels across the screen, which shows that these characters seem to be more in the style of the animatronics of the Rock of Fire Explosion rather than your typical Five Nights robot. We then get cartoon visuals that welcome the employee to the company, stating that they're happy to have this new employee on their team. We then learn that this tape is specifically for the digital entertainment role, a position that requires them to work on all the technical things, lights, vending machines and the robotic performers themselves. The cassette tells us that while this might be a lot to handle, with this new era of technology comes new opportunities. The tape then goes on to welcome the employee to the team, but the tape glitches out for the first time with the visual on screen being stretched off to the left before being completely replaced with a donut advert while another screen seems overlaid over it flashing to tell us that video viewing is unavailable, with some other smaller text instructions over it that are partially unclear over the background of the donut advert, but it starts with what looks like the word connect and mentions that a number should be contacted on the disc casing. The voiceover is replaced with some peaking music while this is going on too, but eventually the tape resumes as if it had never been cut off, almost as if the advert was something that had been accidentally taped over a section of the cassette or else inserted in between a cut-out section of the cassette video in a video editor. This next section tells us that Little Red has grown from its predecessors and we see a segment of a fun facts page that shows us how Red's design has changed over the years and that Little Red has been around in some form since before the late 50s. We learn that Little Red gets their name from the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale and the bowling has apparently been around for a very long time. We also learn the names of two people, Hayden Burrow who apparently introduced Red as a character and Ali Michelle who reimagined the character in the late 50s. A word is also blanked out in the fact naming the two with the sentence reading, she claimed his original design was blank to be an all-inclusive mascot. We then see a map of the USA with dots scattered all over it which shows that the company has spread quite far after many decades. They also show off a little red plush doll, a flyer rad for an arcade cabinet called Little Red's Funnel Bash, and what the voiceover suggests is a television program called Little Red's Mania Lanes. It then goes on to state that Little Red is an iconic character and this is why the digital entertainment role is so important, because Red is a staple of many childhoods and therefore the robotic Red needs to be kept working to remain bigger than life. 
The moment this is said though, the voiceover and the background music stop, leaving only white noise, and the background behind the drawn red on screen also glitches out slightly, flashing the little red's wording in the back dark, and also possibly overlaying something else on screen, but it's impossible to make out what it might be. The video then skips ahead to another segment, again carrying on as if it had never been interrupted. The screen scrolls down over a flyer that talks about auto-animation rules to be followed, with the top and bottom edges of the screen stretching the visual slightly. This flyer has been doodled on with some scribbles and simple drawings including stick men, smiley faces and even a game of hangman. We then get the rules on screen with little red sliding in from the side for each one. We first get the normal red as we're told don't take parts home with you, as all cleaning and mechanical work must stay in the building. A red with his face swung open then appears on screen as we're told the animatronics must be groomed nightly, with fur being brushed, latex mask being polished and the metal skeleton being cleaned. Finally, we get a red that seems dirty and worn as we're told about how some of the robots are older and thus pose a larger risk for injury and malfunctions. However, during this last one, the screen gets slightly darker and the music gets steadily louder, drowning out the voiceover as it advises you on how to safely repair a robot that might be malfunctioning or has had something come loose. Eventually, the voiceover is barely audible and the screen glitches again, turning into just bars of colour stretched vertically across the screen as the music skips. Just before it stops, there is a brief flash of an image, an upside down image of a boy wearing a party hat bearing Little Red's face, and to the left, an upside down image of what looks like a noose. The video then cuts to another advert, this time for powdered bleach, as more peaking, dramatic music plays with what sounds like the Five Nights animatronic screen, and the overlaid text returns, and now it's a lot clearer, and I'm going to include all of the on screen text as written. Video viewing is unavailable. Contact Illusion Plus Entertainment for stock and repair. Failure of connection should be further solved with higher office. Contact number is displayed on computer disc casing. Eventually, the video resumes again, talking about how the employees should now be familiar with the three animatronic care rules and have been given a tour of their new workplace. We are then shown a map which, thanks to the VHS filter for its size and presumably years of past use, is pretty hard to make out a lot of, but we found out it's supposed to show the entire department where the digital entertainment staff work. We're told that the workers' key gives access to the back of the mall, and the workers then go down the travel tunnel for employees to find the auto animation department of Little Red, which would helpfully get marked for us. The employee is then told that they should not be seen by guests as their work is backstage. Among the rooms that get mentioned as being useful for the digital entertainment workers are the programming room, art and design, and the casting and fitting room, and between the mention of the art and design and the casting and fitting rooms, we see a cartoony redhead zooming briefly from off screen in the same style as the head pointer on screen being used to show where each room is backstage. However, the video again is cut off by an interruption, but this time we have a message on screen. Playing in the background seems to be a television advert for Little Red, but once again, music is distorted and peaky so we can't really hear anything from it. It's the message that is the most interesting part though, especially since it gives us a name for the person who is responsible for the cassette footage being on a CD in the first place. Eric, I know Tonya said there was something wrong with the 80s tape we transferred. Turns out whatever she mentioned is corrupting this older cassette as well. I tried to record it, as you can see, but the audio is completely tarnished. Whatever higher-ups are trying to hide, clearly this thing wants all to see. Speaking of the company hiding things, I want to see if I can find those old files JJ stumbled upon last Thursday. If I ever find them, I'll throw them in here so hopefully Alan won't see it. Then you can edit them out once you make your comb through. Also, I'm surprised how well this is going. Like, I never really understood the reasoning behind using the outdated training tape to the new locations, but nothing has really changed over the years. Just a few modifications and we save loads of time, right? Anyways, I'll see you at the New Year's party. 2011, here we come. Ivan, audio technician. We're then taken back to the map tour, where the voiceover shows us where the employee lounge is located on the map. We're then told that the animatronics themselves have been placed around the mall to entertain guests, and we then get a photo of Red standing in what is assumedly a dark room backstage. The voiceover tells us that we won't be doing the job alone, but then a newspaper cutting interrupts. The cutting has the headline, a Birthday Disaster, and we see a photo of Red as part of it. Playing with the saturation settings also reveals that while the image of the newspaper is black and white, this is a colour photo of it, and the stain over the right hand side seems to be red. After a few seconds, another message from Ivan fades in. Remember to delete this, we don't want them knowing we have these. I'm working on making the text a bit clearer, but until then, I think I've found some images of the location this happened at. Maybe you can help me understand what all went down. Fair warning, I don't know how graphic these could be. Ivan, audio technician. The video resumes and we're shown a photo of a dark section of the mall. While the voiceover says that each staff member is assigned their own section to work in and gadgets to attend to, which will be given to them upon arrival at work in envelopes. 
We're then told it's time to meet Red and his friends, but once again we get an advert cut into the video. This time it's for a portable radio and the video viewing unavailable screen is still interposed on top of it and the music is still distorted and peaking. Then it suddenly cuts to an image of a little red robot in a room, high pitched bleeping in the background with another message from Ivan. Okay, well, I just finished the audio mixing. I made some editor's notes in parts where I think we should replace the frames with a modern counterpart. Example, we have completed updates of the rules to follow this, so I think it's best we just scrapped it, right? I tried to delete it myself, but it never updated. Anyway, look here, I found an image of an old little red model. I assume this is the same model that caused the incident in that older location. I'm still working on decoding that article. I contacted JJ and Tonya to get their input, and Tonya came across an interesting discovery. Odd kids' drawings have been edited in within parts of the VHS transfers. I haven't found anything in this one in particular, but if you do, you have my email. I knew this was far past the technical error we would originally assume. Ivan, audio technician. The video then briefly cuts back to the advert, then switches to what seems to be the cover of an interactive fairy tale reading book, Locks the Golden Bear. The cartoon Little Red on the front, and presented by Tarkalin Children's Care. The screen goes black for a while, and then plays a cartoon. We see Little Red walking up to a house in the forest as upbeat music plays. Then we see a door, hear a doorbell, and the door opens letting a fly out. Little Red appears a little unsure, but he enters and walks down a dark hallway with pictures hung wonky on the walls, and the music suddenly turns from upbeat to a dull and unsettling thrumming. We see Little Red staring at something in shock or surprise. Then we see the knot of a noose as flies buzz around it and the music begins to clip and distort. We then further see there appear to be two nooses, and something heaps between them. We then focus on a bear character in a chair, wearing a blue robe or else covered in a blue blanket as the flies buzz around them. They start crying, and when Little Red looks puzzled, the bear points at some objects and something else appears briefly on the screen. There is then another slight flash of the doodled on rules page before we see Ivan's final message of this video. Don't submit this transfer, there's something truly disturbing happening in my department. Looking back at the image I showed you earlier, did you see it? In the shadows? Brighten it, if you can. He's nervous, only me. I don't think I'll be coming to the party. I'm really on edge. Ivan, audio technician. The background music gets more distorted and staticky as we then get a series of images, starting with the cartoon Little Red jumping before seeing a cartoon pig character who scowls at the screen. We then see what looks like a very simple rendition of Little Red's cartoon head, then a side view of something too close to the screen that whites out too badly to make out much. We then get what looks like a very simplistic lion head, and it finally cuts to a close-up on Little Red's latex mask, eyeless and in the shadows. It begins to slowly sink backwards into the shadow, bobbing up and down as if the robot itself is slowly backing away from the camera. Images are then overlaid. Video of a face, the fantastic birthday parties from the television ad snippet we saw earlier. A logo for Illusion Plus Entertainment as the ad plays the part where the Little Red robot is moving around. A slow zoom out of a logo for Little Red dated in 1969. A piece of printed media either advertising something or a newspaper cutting with an image on the right of a figure. Then as Little Red finally vanishes, we see a brief flash of something red and vague on the left hand side of the screen. And then the staticky distorted sound fades off with an echoed ticking noise. Now, as there's only one video, I can't really piece together a lot of what might be happening, even if there's quite a lot happening in those 9 minutes and 11 seconds. Only so many pieces you can fit in a single video, right? So, let's start with what we can determine from this video, and make a few likely guesses from reading between the lines a little. Little Res is a long-running franchise by the point the original VHS tape was made, with them having locations all over the USA, as well as toys, arcade machines, and a show. What exactly a source of establishment Little Reds is though, we don't know yet, although it is somewhere that hosts events such as birthday parties are seen from each television advert and the newspaper cutting, potentially a place containing a bowling alley. However, we do know that the location that gave out this tape is situated within a mall, and seems to be a very big part of it as the robots are apparently located all over the shopping centre. It could even very well be that Little Reds is, or at least owns, the entire mall this location is at. Little Reds seems to be owned by a company known as Illusion Plus Entertainment, which is alternatively written out fully as Illusion Plus, or as Illusion Plus, with the latter so far confined only to the video viewing unavailable message we see. We also know that Little Red is not the only character that Illusion Plus has, as before the tape goes totally off the rails towards the end, we are due to be introduced to the other characters. Who the other characters are, we don't really know for sure yet, but we do see a few other animal characters at the end during the cartoonish section just as the video goes fully into the creepiness. We have the bear, who from the title of the interactive reading book might be called Locks. 
We have the pig who appears afterwards, and then we have potentially a lion character, but since everything's so distorted at this point, it could be something entirely different. We might be able to finally meet some of them in future videos if they come along. It's also possible that these cruder cartoon drawings are the odd kids drawings Ivan mentions during his third message. However, it's through Ivan and his group that we get our hook for the video. A little Red's long history, something happened. An incident in an old location that the higher up seem to be trying to cover up and hide. We know that it occurred in a location other than the one Ivan works in, and presumably one different from where this tape transfer was taking place owing to Ivan being the one working on it, as he makes reference in his third message of that older location, which suggests it is one different from where he is. We also know that the little red robot involved in the incident was of an older model than the current one, again from the third message. Ivan seems to be one of a number of Little Red's employees who work in the backstage area who are trying to investigate what the company is hiding from them, while at the same time making transfers of the old training tapes. The reason they seem to be interested is that one of their number, a woman named Tonya, noticed during a transfer of another 80s tape for the company that there was some strange corruption affecting it. The tape that Ivan is now transferring also seems to have been subject to the same corruption on an older cassette which either means that the tape Tonya worked on was made after this one, possibly in 1989, or had already been copied to a newer cassette tape somewhere down the line. Either way, Ivan and the others feel that something is trying to tell them something through the tapes related to what is being hidden, and so all of them are trying to dig up whatever old information they can and are using the transfers as a way to communicate secretly with each other so they don't get caught by the company, in particular someone named Alan. Through the text, Ivan seems to mainly be communicating with Eric, someone who he works with, most likely at the same location, and who might be slightly senior to Ivan given that he will be the one to check over the transfer tape once Ivan is done. We also get mention of Tonya and another person named JJ, who could also work at the same location, but given that this modern part of the tale is set somewhere around the end of 2010, could just as easily be workers in other locations seeking out information in other parts of the USA. Ivan has also made attempts to record whatever he feels the corruption is trying to say, but has had no luck. However, by the end of the transfer, something has spooked Ivan enough that he doesn't want the transfer to get submitted, and it makes us wonder if he found something major. As for the incident itself, we don't really seemingly learn that much about it. What we do know is that it happened years ago, at an older location, involved a past model of the little red robot, and has been covered up. Newspaper cutting we get hints that it happened at a birthday party the place was holding, and if the red stain on the same cutting is blood, it was deadly to someone. We also get two sightings of nooses, once during the upside down clip just after the three rules, and again at the end with the cartoon. The flies buzzing around in the latter seem to hint that whoever or whatever used the noose was there long enough to decay at least a little bit, or maybe that the location where it was used was filthy enough to have flies. It's the fact that it appears next to the photo of the boy that makes me think there might be a connection between the noose and the incident though, especially as the boy is wearing a party hat in the photo. Could the boy pictured be the victim of the incident and was he hung? I've also tried to brighten the image that Ivan tells Eric to brighten in the final message, but I haven't really been able to make out much. If anybody else is able to find something through image manipulation, let me know in my comments. I know I'm missing something there, probably. One thing I do notice though is shortly before the video cuts away from the photo of the older model red robot, the photo alters just slightly and the robot looks directly at the fourth wall which just makes the image that much creepier. So right now, while we know quite a bit, there's not really enough to form a proper narrative as of yet. We know that Little Reds was founded before the late 50s, they spread across the USA, something happened at a birthday party during the time they've been around, they stopped updating their training tapes around the late 80s, and in modern times, a small group of their employees are trying to find out what happened and why it's been covered up. I hope that this one is going to become a series because it leaves me with a lot of questions I'd like to one day answer. What did Ivan see? What happened at the birthday party? Who is the boy in the upside down image? What does the news have to do with the incident and is it even connected? Why hasn't Illusion Plus updated their training tapes in about 20 years? What new rules were introduced after the 1988 tape was made? What roles do Eric, JJ, Tonya and Alan have to play? What about Hayden Burrow and Ali Michelle? What word was blanked out in the fun facts section and why was it hidden? Who hid it? Is the uploader who found the disc Ivan's child? Why did the cartoon redhead appear during the map tour and why was it the same style as the short animation we saw later? There is an open door that the bear was pointing at who or what was on the other side of it. But for now, go give it a watch if you haven't already. For this video alone, it deserves the attention.
Whoa, and just as I was recording this script, the channel behind this video uploaded again, quite a few times. This time, it's a few short little videos called The Information Booth, The Coming of Grandma, and Crying in the Club. It's a real horror piece with no obvious ties to Little Reds right now. The credits of The Information Booth also include a name which, if you remember my introduction, should be very familiar. Yep, the same person who told me about Little Reds. I immediately messaged them about this and I got this response, so that's one little mystery solved immediately. I don't think they will have anything to do with Little Reds, I just know that if I don't mention it, someone in the comments will ask me if I've seen them. So this is me saying, yes, I've seen them. We'll see if it has a part to play later on, if at all. The creator also uploaded these two images to their Twitter, with the text indicating that this is Red's progression. There's not much to say about these images really, although I do wonder if something's hiding beneath the banner in the first image. Because of course I do, I'm me. For now, we just have to guess. At least until we get handed a little more information to work with. Hopefully, this is just the start of another series we can all enjoy a little further down the line.